out with that. My name is Topher. I go around quizzing people about the Bible. Okay. I ask you three questions. You answer all three. I'm giving out a hundred dollars. Okay, let's have it. You ready? All right. How many children did Jacob have? No, I couldn't tell you. you can tell me when well, he had thirteen. Twelve were boys. One was a girl. Okay. Okay. Which son did he give the coat of colors to? Oh, David. No. Oh, I can't. I can't remember. It was Joseph. Joseph. That's right. <laughs> yes, Golly, yes, Joseph. Yes, ma'am. That comes back. I need to read my Bible more, don't I? Hey, everybody do just a little yeah, bit. They I say know. you know just a little bit. I've been through so much this past two years. I get. I just. I lost track of everything. That's, that, I feel like that's a sentiment everybody shares, you know. Well, I lost seven family members just within a few months of each other. That's my own. So I've been through a lot of that. Okay, well, I'm going to give you one as a layup. Can you do, can you do this for me? <laughs> I don't know, baby. Okay, know. okay. Who was Jesus referring to when he called him the, the comforter? going to send you my comforter. Remember that? God? The Holy Spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit. But look, ma'am, here's your $100 steal. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Are you kidding? No, ma'am. Because even when we're not understanding and we mess up, God has never forsaken us. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. You are wonderful. I'm gonna help you out, so? I thank you. Okay. You gonna get back in that word? Yes, right. You're gonna need it. Strengthen that spirit, okay? I sure do. Yes, ma'am. Well, God bless you. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles, and that was a great millstone. All right. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna call this video. Uh, I don't really have a title for it at this, at this time. But by the time you see it, I will have placed a title there. All right. Anyway, it's going to be concerning this video that I saw. One of the elder brothers sent it to me. Uh, the brother you call, elder brother you call from GMS Arkansas, sent me the video. And at first, you know, I may entitle it, Did You Notice? Did You Notice the Subtlety? How about that? Did you notice the subtlety? Which really. Let's look up the word subtlety. So in this video, the lady used a subtle maneuver on him, right? He walked up to her and told her he was quizzing people on the Bible. And he asked him three questions. If you answer the questions, you get $100, right? Now, he didn't say if you answer the questions correctly. He just said if you answer them, which she did answer them, but she got all three wrong. And he still gave her $100. But the subtlety of it was when she knew that $100 was involved, she was willing to participate, right? But in there, after she answered all the questions wrong, she said she'd been going through a lot these last two years. She lost like seven loved ones back to back. Then she said, I've been strapped. I've been strapped. So what does that mean? And that put, that put the spirit on him <laughs> to go ahead and give her the money anyway because she said she was strapped. That's why he said, well, this help you out. This is the word strapped. Strapped. It says short of money. There it is. I'm in a, in a, uh, the uh, <clears throat> example given, I'm constantly strapped for cash. See that? So it means you're short on money. What does strap mean? Poor, broke. See that? So she messed with his brain. But she probably was going to give it to her anyway because he's a simple Christian. Me, and, you know, it's no big deal. Just an observation through the spirit. All right. Uh, and I made it entitled observation of subtlety or something like that. And, you know, I'll see what the spirit gives me. It says, meaning of strapped in English, Cambridge Dictionary, used to describe a person or organization that does not have enough money. See that? Strapped, needy, wanting. This is from dictionary.com. Collins Dictionary, strapped. Definition of meaning of someone is strapped for money. They do not have enough money to buy or pay for the things they want or need. Urban Dictionary. Now, when you say strapped, it's something different. Of course, we don't, we don't want that. We don't want a nigga definition. All right? Because strap means you got a gun. You know? All right? So that's good enough. So you were, so she said she was strapped. You know? 
And in him being a so-called Christian, you know, he was compelled to go ahead and give her the money anyway. See, he pulled it out and gave it to her anyway. See? That's, that's, what it's, that's what it is. So when the brother sent me the video, at first I didn't get it. Because it said, in, you know, in this caption, uh, watch the devil at work. She played him. And I didn't understand it at first. But after watching it about two or three times, then I, then I got it. I, you know, I had to listen real close. First, I thought that maybe he said, if you answer all three correctly... But he didn't say that. So maybe he was going to give her the money all along. He was just a, it was just an attempt to engage individuals about the Bible. But I did a video recently, a, a live stream, with an article that said that 96% of all people in the United States are unbelievers anyway. So it's not likely that these people are going to know the answers to these questions. Even if it's something simple like, you know, everybody knows when the Lord said, I will send you another comforter. Who was he talking about? He was talking about the Holy Spirit, of course. That's easy. But she didn't even know that. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 1. So let's just deal with a couple of scriptures here. This is a quick lunchtime video. It says, Would to the Most High you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Hamashiach. All right, so... As we know, the Most High is the husband man, Yahweh Shai is the bridegroom, and the elect is his bride. But I fear lest by any means as the servant beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the anointed. And you can see that clever serpent spirit, you know, you know old, little old lady, you know, just got a few things in a cart or whatever, lost seven family members, you know, she got, she participated in the, in the, in the uh, I guess interview if you want to say that she participated. She was a good sport, but she knew she was going to get a hundred dollars. Now I wonder what would happen if he had not, you know, if he said, "Well, you didn't get none of the questions right. I can't give you the hundred dollars." She probably might have had an attitude about it, but who knows, you know? But that was very subtle what she did. I hope you caught it. If you didn't, go back and watch it. Verse four says, "For if he that cometh preaches another Yahweh Shai, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received." Or another gospel, which you have not accepted, accepted, you might well bear with him. See, so this is what we have to do. Even though we see this Christianity is complete garbage, right? He just wanted to be nice and give him. He should have just walked up to him and just handed a hundred damn dollars then. But I guess he wanted to push it out there. See, Christians are all into works of kindness and acts of, you know, what they think is going to earn them something. No, they tell us that salvation is not by keeping the commandment, but then you think that salvation is by you being nice to people. Which it was a nice gesture. It was kind or whatever. But at the end of the day, she got you, Jack. She got you. Now, this is real quick. And these people on the earth don't have the Holy Spirit. This is uh, John 14 and verse 16. It says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. And that was true. What he said, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. That's the comforter. Whom the world cannot receive. You're going to ask a lady about the comforter and she can't even receive the comforter? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So you see, there it is right there. All right? These people don't have the spirit of truth. The world can't receive it. And there's another one here. This is... Uh, Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it shows you the state that your average human being is going to be in. Not just Israelites, the wicked Israelites, but all the rest of the nations, they're in gross darkness. And that lady was in gross darkness. She know David had nothing to do with no coat of many colors. Isaiah 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That's to the elect. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness to people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. See that? So, and let's read verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. What Gentiles going to come to the light? The Israelite foreigners scattered all over the earth. When they hear about the truth, it's going to bring them in. Those that are, are meant to receive it and get it, which are the elect. Okay? Now I want to look up another scripture. Let's see if I can go to my apocrypha. Just bear with me here. Because see, these people are very subtle. Exquisite. Let's see if I can look that word up. And like I said, just a quick video. 
All right, exquisite, yeah. Ecclesiastes 19.25, it says, There is an exquisite subtlety. What's exquisite mean? It's almost like, like, like perfect, exquisite, like awesome. You know, there's a perfect, awesome, and subtlety. We can look up the word subtlety. Let's go there and get it. Let's bring it up. We can actually look up both words. I couldn't look it up from that, from that uh, app right here. Define exquisite. And see, that's the Edomites for you. They're very clever and shrewd. That's the serpentine nature, though. Exquisite. Extremely beautiful and typically delicate. That ain't what we wanted. What What does it mean if something is exquisite, marked by flawless craftsmanship, by or by beautiful, ingenious, delicate, or elaborate execution? And she executed that so 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 exquisitely. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I've been going through a lot these last two years. I lost, you know, lost seven family members. <laughs> I lost seven family members, and I've been really strapped. See that? Almost like a damn grifter going on yeah and we, we pretty much that's pretty much the definition it says uh exquisite is like an excellence and it can be physically you know like uh, as far as looks or it can also be in action you see it says exceeding from wiktionary exquisite exceeding extreme keen in a good or bad sense you see so that's like very serpentile these people are very serpentile in their ways. Now I want to go back to that scripture. Oh, we said we're going to look up subtlety. Right? That's like when people know something and act like they don't know it. She knew what she was doing. Doggone it. Come on now. Low on time. See what, hold on, brothers. See what time it is. All right, I got a few minutes. Define. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? Spelled it wrong. All right. Um. All right. So it says subtle is it, uh so slight as to be difficult to detect, and she slid it in there so easy to the point where very difficult for him to detect, difficult to understand, able to make fine distinctions, and characterized by skill or ingenuity. See that? So she. And that's second nature to an Edomite is to be subtle. It says sly, artful, cunning. See that? And we read that in the first uh, scripture, 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. As the serpent beguiled Eve with his subtlety. And they, and they continue to do it even to this very day. They're very subtle. Right? Very subtle. <laughs> Excuse me. It says... Subtle for Miriam Webster. Subtle, elusive, cunning, crafty. And that's these serpents. These people are very cunning and crafty. They're very, you know, very slick. That's good enough. Very slick. So back in second uh so like Ecclesiastes 19:25, there is an exquisite subtlety. The same is unjust. See? Individuals that are unjust often use exquisite subtlety on you. And it's really particularly Esau Edom. And there is one that turneth aside to make judgment appear. And there is a wise man that justifieth in judgment. Listen to this. The, there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. And that's the trait that all these devils got. It says, uh, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance and making if he, as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. And if for want of power, he be hindered from sinning, yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. And that's one thing about it. You cannot change the nature of these people. All right? They're cunning trickery. You don't be fooled by that. Oh, my old lady, this, that, and the other shit. She looked like she was a former nigger sayer. Okay? She used to say the word. Probably still do. She was nice right then. But see, whenever you deal with money... That's these people God. Their God is money. Gold, oil, drugs. That's their God. See? So, you know, what this dude wanted to do, he was basically, you know, up there, I mean, you know, I guess you can call it a good deed. I mean, the shit is irritating, really, when it comes to these Christians. 
They think that they're going to make people convert or come to the Lord by being nice to them. You ain't going to make nobody convert by being nice to them. Because it's, it's a such thing as predestination. They can't nobody come to the Lord unless the Most High want them anyway. Let's go there. No, man. You can't even go to the Savior unless the Most High wants you to. This right here is John 6, 44. It says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. If this lady right here was really into the Bible, what else, I mean, what else does she do? She old. She, you can't tell me she worked. She ain't out doing nothing. So what? why wouldn't she? That should be the only thing you would be doing if you was a person of the Lord. You would be heavily into the scriptures, which... You know, the Bible ain't for them anyway. And you can't come to the Lord unless he, unless he draws you, unless he attracts you. Unless his spirit wants you to come, you're not going to come. John 6, 44 again. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. Right. See? Uh, can come to the Father. I don't know if that's if that's there. Yeah, that's already there. Uh, there's another one, though. And I can't remember what it is. I, I can't remember it. Uh, save to whom? To whom? Let's see here if that, if that brings it up. Yeah, really not what I wanted. Uh, but at the end of the day, only the people that, that the Lord wants is going to get the Bible. It says right here, not, Matthew 19 and 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save to whom it is given to receive. It's really not what I wanted. I kind of wanted something in the line. Is it John 6? We just read John 6. Uh, yeah, this is not, not it. Uh, yeah, we just read that one. I believe. Is it? Hold on here. Okay, so we read John 6, 44, and then there's another here in John 6 and 65. He says right here, uh, let's we'll start at 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For you have a shot new from the beginning who they were that believe not and who shall betray him. And one thing that she didn't say. She didn't even say, uh, you know, the, the J word. That that guy said it, though. He said it. She ain't no believer. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. You see? And if you can't get to the father, if you can't get to the son, you can't get to the father. So the father has to draw you to the son, and you have to go through the son to get to the father. John 14 and 6. Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me but by the Father. So the Father got to draw you to the Son. And if the Father don't draw you to the Son, then you can't get to the Father either because you need to go through the Son, right, who is the door to get to the Father. That's why when he, when she was asked, what did Yahweh Shai mean when he said, I'll send you another company? She said, who, God? Which in a, in, a, in a roundabout way, I could see that, but she didn't know what she was saying. All right? She didn't know what she was saying. So that's just a quick lesson for you right there. Lord willing, it was edifying. You got something out of it. We'll see you again soon. Lord willing.